embrace being wrong. Go outside of your firm. This is, of course, a continuation in the series of embracing being wrong. Uh, if you want to see the previous videos, you can check them out in the links there down below. Short and sweet one today. Uh, I want you to read, and I'm not talking about the Wall Street Journal or the Financial Times. I'm talking about reading you know, actual academic journals, academic papers. Now, interestingly, I found myself at a firm once uh, when I had some free time. I would read the academic journals, and they didn't like that. They had no problem with me reading the Wall Street Journal or sitting there and watching CNBC, but when you actually wanted to kind of learn and expand your knowledge, they had a problem with that. Hopefully, you don't find yourself there. Read some books by you know, industry practitioners, experts in the field. These books are you know, long and they're just filled with a wealth of knowledge. I think you can find a lot of insights there. And I want you to go outside of your expertise. If you're a fixed income guy, I want you to read you know, journals and books from, from people doing equities. If you're an equity guy, I want you to read books about people doing behavioral finance or, or Mac or whatever it is. And even though it's outside of your direct uh, expertise and your direct job function, you will find insights from these other experts in the field uh, that ultimately will add up together to be very meaningful to you. Uh, I want you to go to industry conferences, you know, regularly attend one of these industry conferences. You're going to hear new perspectives. You're going to hear about new innovations, new ways of analyzing things. And you're going to speak to you know new vendors. Maybe there is a vendor out there that can solve a problem for you directly, quickly, easily, and relatively inexpensively. Um, this could be great for you and the firm. And all, what I want you to do is, is take this one step further. When you come back from the conferences, I want you to discuss with your colleagues, or better yet, present to them some of the best and most important ideas uh, that you learned at that conference. Share the wealth with your colleagues. Uh, you know, talk to others, you know, network with people. This is not about, you know, hey, I need a new job or, or you know, putting together the pieces for a job in the future. Really, this is, I'm talking about knowledge and knowledge sharing, ping ideas off of each other, uh, listen to what, what, what their ideas are, give and receive feedback, find a way to collaborate, um, and ultimately develop a true relationship with some other people in the industry outside of your firm that will ultimately enable you to be better and hopefully you're able to give some back to them too. Uh, there's always professional designations, you know, CFA, uh, CFP, whatever it might be. I think one thing here is because there is an exam looming in the horizon, you're motivated to learn the material, uh, you become an expert, you learn this body of knowledge as well known. So when you have these designations, people know what you went through, what you learned to get that designation. Uh, ultimately, you're expanding your knowledge base. So again, uh, the idea is that all of these little things, you know, maybe they're not directly uh, relevant to you today, but but they have some tangential uh, relevance and it's incremental and you're slowly grabbing things from here and there and you eventually put it together and you come up with your next big idea and you're just getting little tidbits here and there and putting it together in a package that works for you and your firm. Uh, it really does add up. So again, embrace being wrong and we're going to do it here by learning. Always be a lifelong student, no matter where you are in your career uh, or in your academia. Uh, thanks so much for listening.